So I have been quarantining in my own house and I wanted to do something because I was going crazy. So I decided to take one of my extra bed sheets that I had. I had this Tinkerbell fabric. If you saw in the beginning of the video, super cute. I've been also scrolling on TikTok and a big thing has been cottage core. Cottage core is like a, a cottagey kind of vibe. And when I and I've had this pattern in my abode for a while. So I said, let me design a little Tinkerbell cottage core pinup mix. Now let me show you guys how I sewed it up. So I started off with this pattern. I really loved it because of the poofy sleeves and I used a D pattern from the macaw pattern. And I had this beautiful bed sheet fabric from Think Thrift in Fort Lauderdale and this blue fabric and the lace that I forgot to show. The only thing I bought were these buttons, the Tinkerbell buttons to go with the Tinkerbell dress. And every time I do an outfit, don't judge my drawing skills, but I like to draw up an idea of what it's going to look like and what fabric goes where. When you work with fabrics that have any type of print on it, you have to make sure that you center the print how you like. Usually I cut my fabric at a warehouse, but since I am quarantining, I am using my small desk. I know a lot of people online use the floor, but I have a dog that would be all over it and my back will hurt. I know I'm very untraditional when cutting fabric, but I don't like putting pins in my pattern. I usually use weights or my pin weight in my boyfriend's hands when available. Make sure that when you cut your pattern, you draw all the markings on the wrong side of the fabric by mistake i put it on the right side but on the wrong side and use a ruler any tools you need to make sure you get the lines placed correctly now this cut piece is not part of the pattern um i created this because i wanted a break in the pattern as you can see in the little image on the right bottom right I created a three inch banding to go before on the skirt where the rouging will be just to give it like a break between the pattern since it's so such a big pattern Tinkerbell dress. Here I'm cutting the lining and marking as needed. Now this is the front part of the pattern. I would have to say if you're not good at stitching detailed, this is where you would take your time. So first I cut my pattern and then again mark it with my chalk. You will notice it has a straight line and a dotted line. One is to fold and one is to stitch. And I love these see-through rulers because it helps make a line and see what you're doing. So for the stitch line, you see me putting dashes and for the full line, I put a line. And repeat on the other side. And I also like to mark down where the buttons are on the pattern in the center. Here 
here's a picture on how it looks when it's folded. So you would fold where the fold line is over to the stitch line. And I really focused on recording this because I wanted to make sure that you all saw exactly how it's done because I have a friend of mine that that was the most questionable part of this pattern. Make sure you line the pins exactly how you're gonna run it through the machine. You're not gonna run the needle on to the pins because you don't wanna break your machine. So as you sew, you will remove the pins. So having them facing all the same way really helps in making it easier for you to remove them. And stitch, when you stitch this with on the machine, make sure you get it as close to the fold as possible so the flaps don't go flapping around. So now this is part of the pattern where they tell you to put the buttons onto the top. But these Tinkerbell buttons had like a really thick back and I didn't want it to just pop out. So I cut out the little loop where you're supposed to sew the buttons. Since these are fake buttons, we don't really need it. So I cut it off and I used E600 fabric glue to just put it where I marked my buttons. So I wanted to add a little trim to the pattern. As you can see, I put the two right sides together and I sandwiched my trim in between. And just like the pattern um, tells you, I use a 5 8 seam allowance. And I know that this is controversial, but I don't really put pins if I don't need it. Saves time, saves energy. And you'll notice that I have washi tape on my machine. That helps me line to the seam allowance that I'm using in that project. And washi tape doesn't really stick to the machine. So that's a good tip if you're using the same seam allowance for everything. It helps keep everything aligned and you don't have to think, you know, where you got to go. So for the sleeves, it's a rolled hem at the end of the sleeves. And then you switch your machine to a zigzag stitch and you use elastic to create that bubble effect on the sleeve. So just pull on the elastic slightly. You don't want to pull it a lot because you don't want to like have your arm out of oxygen. So for this part, it's the blue that I told you was not part of this pattern. As you can see in the little drawing, um, it, I, I used it just to break the pattern um, since it was very large tinker belly I wanted a difference in it so it's just me sewing it to the bottom of the circle skirt before putting the rouging panel at the bottom so I use a gather foot because I am lazy when it comes to gathering by hand but I use this gather foot to gather the bottom and I also added piping in the bottom And I didn't show it in the video, but I did make a ma matching mask. So what do you guys think about that? It took me literally one day to make because I had nowhere else to go. And I know it was kind of rushed at the end, not because I was rushed or anything, but because I don't know if you guys, if it happens to you guys the same way, but sometimes when you start a project, you have nowhere to go, you just want to finish that project. And I was really excited and I was able to use things I had in my house, like this trim. Um, I just got these buttons, but super cute. Let me know if you have any other patterns that you guys have used to make, you know, 
dresses out of bed sheets. I think it's such a great thing. Fabric is, the fabric that you find is unique because nobody else is gonna have it. It, you save money on fabric because I got this sheet for $2.99 at Think Thrift in Fort Lauderdale when if I needed this much fabric it could be up to $8 a yard to $14 a yard. So you really save up. Thank you all for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it and it will help me out. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.